Hello, Ophiuchus, and welcome to your July reading with me, Elizabeth. I hope that you're all doing well. This is going to be for sun, moon, and rising. This is good for the month of July, and as always, these are general messages. So never give up your power to a reading or to a reader. Use your own highest intuition and guidance. Take what resonates and leave the rest. All of the decks are listed in the description box below, along with the best way to contact me to inquire about a personal session. So I'm sorry that your video is a bit late this month, but let's get into it for the month of July. So we're going to use tarot and oracle. And as always, I call in the divine with love and with light. And you know, each month I do the videos in order of most liked and you win every month. So keep hitting the like button and let's get into your reading. Archangels at the four corners and the six elements of earth, wind, fire, water, spirit, and ether to join us for this reading for my beautiful Ophiuchus Collective for the month of July, 2022. So let's see what is manifesting for you from the Moonology Manifestation deck since we are in cancer season as I'm filming this. Technically, maybe, maybe not. Uh, we get the new moon in Pisces, attune to the divine. Beautiful energy for you. I just did Cancer's reading and they got a new moon in Aquarius. So it feels like many people are starting new cycles and you are included in that with the Piscean energy of an attunement uh, to higher level consciousness, to deeper uh, psychic attunement, you're, you're attuning. And the Piscean energy is obviously, it's that 12th sign of undoing the 12th house of all of the polarity, all of the duality. It's the house of you know, being psychic and uh, deeply feeling. And it's very, very internal, very intuitive, uh, really beautiful that the divine wants to come in for Ophiuchus this month and this really nice attunement for you. So the start of a new cycle. And at the bottom, we get the full moon in Pisces, new moon in Pisces, full moon in Pisces with forgive. So Piscean energy being important for Ophiuchus this month, very interesting. The two fish swimming in opposite directions. This could be talking about a relationship, something from the past that you're having this kind of higher level attunement to something that's allowing you to do some releasing, allowing you to have greater inner peace and tranquility is something that I'm seeing here. So let's use the psychic tarot and get a couple of cards and then we'll move on uh, to more in-depth tarot and we'll be using a few more cards this month than I usually use so thank you to the angels and the guides okay oh you're getting the nine of pentacles with material harvest and the nine speak to completions So we get the two of cups here for you with material harvest and the nine of pentacles. Interesting. Uh, the nine of pentacles can often be a single person's energy. It doesn't have to be, but it's where you're self-sufficient. It's where you have everything that you need from within yourself. You're standing on your own. You know your self-worth. You know what you're you know what you bring to the table. And I love how his hands are open and the sun is behind him. And there's even like, um, I'm feeling like this is very plasma-like here, earth energy and water energy. Um, and his hands are open and he's in reverence. So I feel that you're gonna have a lot to be grateful for this month. Um, the physical and the emotional, the tangible and the spiritual is what I'm seeing here. And that's Piscean energy The you know, it's the, it's the physicality and it's the spirituality. It's kind of all of it, uh, spiritual union coming in. So, uh, again, knowing what you bring to the table, being able to, um, create your own life to build for yourself, knowing your sense of, of worth, all of those beautiful things. And then there's this gorgeous energy of soul union and soul connection and love, uh, and healing that's happening here. It's your inner masculine and feminine, but it's also relational. So you're attuning to the divine, a new um, energy of attunement into divine love, divine union. For many of you, this is about a divine counterpart. Uh, you've been working really hard on yourself. 
is something that I'm seeing. You've been doing a lot of your inner work and you're seeing how it's paying off in your physical world. Like all of the work that you've put in, that Piscean energy, it was feeling like it was internal and you're seeing a lot of rewards for that. And then there's this beautiful partnership that shows up in your physical world as well, or there's a spiritual union that you're having within yourself, uh, really beautiful. And at the bottom, I just wanna show you, uh, was the Eight of Swords. So I feel that this is something that, this is not very attuned to the divine. This is where we're all up in our head you know, restrictions, overcoming things um, like this because it's related to the strength card, number eight. And when you turn the eight on its side, I always say it's the Lemus Gate. And even in this um, deck here, in this card, we see the forever there, the infinity. So I feel like uh, you're coming into this uh, greater place of self-mastery this month where you're no longer afraid. You're no longer um, trapped inside of your own mind or, <clears throat> excuse me, um, things that have sort of held you captive. Uh, you've really done the inner work there with solitude or the hermit card at the bottom there. Really, really done a lot of inner work and you're gonna be seeing it pay off in your material world here. It's beautiful. So let's get into your tarot a little bit deeper. I'm using um, the Tarot of Mystical Moments this month and we'll pull lots of tarot and lots of oracle. I've got angel messages. I've got fractal cards that are really cool. And I have a very special empath oracle deck that we'll be pulling from as well. And I've got another deck for clarifiers if we need it. So thank you to the angels and the guides for Ophiuchus, Sun, Moon, and Rising, highest and best messages for the month of July. few gifts. Here we go. So we get the Knight of Pentacles, Virgo coming out here, slow and steady. The Knights, I love to see the Knights because it shows that there's action with the Knight of Pentacles. There are goals. There are things being laid down. Uh, it's connected into the Nine of Pentacles. So, um, and the Seven of Swords coming out for you, protecting your nest egg here. Let's see what's going on with that. Queen of Swords. So we're getting some people here. Virgo and Libra. Ten of Cups. Look at that. Love and partnership and reciprocated love. Um, again, tranquility and peace. The Mermaid and the Merman. Really beautiful. I feel like this is something that many of you really have your eye on, our divine partnerships, divine unions. It doesn't have to be romantic. You know, this can be friendships, family, coworkers, um, all of that. It's not specifically romantic. For many of you, it is, but I feel um, four of pentacles there. Okay, so let's look at this. Bottom of the deck is the Eight of Cups. I love this Eight of Cups because it shows that where there is emotional dissatisfaction, where there is, you know, some pain around something, things not quite working out, another eight. So a test of our strength, leading us on the path to greater self-mastery. This is around the heart space. Um, and it's like all of these unions are around her, the two dragonflies, you know, the two birds, the two butterflies, the two swans, and she's sort of on this path here and she's a ladybug and ladybugs always signify good luck and finding your home. So it's having the courage and the strength to leave things behind, you know, to go off in search of the ninth cup. And in your case, I feel like you are really looking towards the 10th cup, right? And in your life, you may, you know, recently have... I don't know, maybe found out that something that you were working for, something that you had put a lot of effort into was taking its sweet old time, very, very slow to grow. Perhaps you found out that there was some kind of a lie in that. 
uh, Knight of Pentacles with the Seven of Swords, or um, that you're sort of rethinking some of your plans. The Virgo energy, you know, is ruled by Mercury and it's very analytical and one step at a time, like really methodically working on things, planning things out. So there may be something this month that you're sort of realizing that isn't aligned with you, that isn't attuned to your true divinity, that isn't attuned to your path um, in a, you know, in a, it's, you're really logically uh, sort of carefully thinking these things through. What I also love about this Seven of Swords is that uh, she's protecting what's hers. So there is sort of that energy that's coming through here. Um, the Nine of Pentacles, Material Harvest with the Knight of Pentacles. This is something that you're actively doing. You're growing your life like one step at a time. You're not in such a rush to do it. And uh, what you have already laid down, what you've already begun to see grow and bring you fulfillment and bring you material wealth and abundance, your harvest, you're protective over it. And that's a really good place to be. That's something that I'm really seeing here. You're protective over it. There is this, um, the element of earth is really coming out for you. Four of Pentacles with the Knight of Pentacles. I'm sensing that um, with the serpent there, I kind of love the serpent for you because that's very Ophiuchus, isn't it? Would you say Ophiuchin? Um, it's very Ophiuchus. So I'm sensing where not everybody has access to you right now. You know uh, who is aligned with you and you're going to be knowing that even more, attuning to the divine new moon in Pisces. Uh, you're not scared of the shadow. You're not afraid of, uh, let's say, the snake in the grass, right? You're not afraid of the serpent energy. You're not afraid of change. You're not afraid of transformation because you know that it's there for your growth. Uh, but you're still sort of keeping some things or energies or people behind um, the gate. Like they can't get in. Not everybody can get in. On a more mundane and practical level, I feel like this is where you're protecting your assets, you're protecting your ideas, you're protecting your vision, your work, very protective over it, and not in a bad way. Uh, it's in a way where it's because you know that when these eggs hatch, there's new life. It's very sacred, right? It's very, very sacred. It's part of the harvest. It's not just harvesting money or a bank account or material things. It's harvesting life. <laughs> so there's something really, really beautiful in this energy. I think this is my favorite Seven of Swords um, in any deck uh, that we have. And uh, this is also speaking to, you know, just financial concerns in general. Everything is so expensive right now. Inflation, blah, 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 all of that. I won't bore you with all of that. But it is this energy of, you know, conservation, being very careful with how you spend your money this month, with how you spend your energy, what you pay attention to, because you are attuning to the divine you are attuning to something deeper, to something higher. Uh, so this is where it's at for you, it is in this cups energy. This is the blessing. You know this is where the blessing is. Uh, you know that it's important to have that self-worth and to stand on your own. Again, knowing what you bring to the table, but also knowing that uh, you have this broader sense that you... Uh, can team up with other people and you're stronger together and that's that spiritual union and I love how the queen of swords is sitting right at the center the, this uh, quality of observing and not being in a rush it's a very calm speech it's a very calm mind it's really looking out over a great distance having a very high vantage point I'm seeing that in your relations this month, you can see through illusion and you can see through anything that is sort of wearing a false mask and it doesn't really even phase you because you're focused on what's ahead. Like you're willing to, uh, you're very present, 
you're in your presence, you're very present, <laughs> you know, so you're, you're grounded. I see a beautiful groundedness with the nine of pentacles and the knight of pentacles. Um, so there's a balance that's with you of being very present and mindful in the moment, but also looking forward. Beautiful. I think it's just beautiful. It's a really lovely energy. So I'm seeing Leo and Virgo that's coming out here. And this energy of spiritual partnership and spiritual union. Some of you may be calling in a soulmate or there's somebody that's like sort of right there. Uh, you can see them. It's like you can feel it even. It's uh, super psychic, empathic. But also that your mind is equally important, like the higher mind, uh, that quality that Libra brings in. So let's get you a few more uh, oracle cards from the Psychic Tarot, and then we will get you some additional uh, tarot cards from this deck. Yeah, see, there's that Eight of Swords. It just really wanted to fly out. There may be somebody that you are dealing with or energies, energies of the world. There's so much going on, um, you know, that we've seen uh, just in this past, like, week, a uh, couple of weeks where, you know, the collective, you may be really feeling the collective energies. You're aware of them. Um, but you're attuning to something higher. You really are. Here's, uh, here's the eight, the right? Eight of swords that trapped in fear and the seven of swords person or energy in general, it may be connected to that where, um, you know, I feel it's not that you're disconnected because Piscean energy isn't disconnected, but it's that you're attuning to something a bit higher. And if you're feeling this energy, then this message for you is that, yes, everything is good. You know, it's sort of like a radical acceptance. Uh, this is the Wheel of Fortune here, and this is cycles, and it's change. Um, it's the karmic wheel as well. It's a completion of a cycle. It's the wheel turning. And no matter what, like the energies will always carry forward. Uh, nothing stays stuck for too long. So if you are sort of feeling like, inside of your relationship, your love life, your career, if anything is feeling a bit stuck in this moment because of external circumstances, because maybe somebody is scared, somebody's too afraid, they want to move so slowly and, um, or they're not moving at all, um, that, you know, the wheel comes in and things won't say stuck forever. So it is, it's a powerful destiny point for you with that wheel of fortune. So, you know, it's beautiful because the wheel is going to turn and it's going to bring in change. And it's where, you know, that can bring in, uh, good luck or it can bring in not so good luck, but at the same time, it's where your frequency is. And as you are attuning to the divine, the wheel is going to respond to that. That's how I see it. So the Sagittarian or Jupiterian energy, Jupiter in Aries right here, um, you know, this is where I feel that positivity is really going to help you. And again, if you're dealing with people who are in this energy of, really trapped in fear they're they're really feeling all of and many of them may have very legitimate reasons uh i don't see that i see that you will be empathic to them i see that you will hold space for them i see that you will be there with open hands and open arms i see that you will you know uh, give them connection but i also see that you will have this ability to uh simultaneously uh not take on all of that energy to disconnect uh, because again you're looking forward because you know that there's all of these beautiful blessings for the world um, and for everybody but as particularly for yourself and inside of like I'm seeing this as like your closest circle here so let's see what was at the bottom yes exactly attuned to the divine and it's your divinity within with your third eye chakra coming out so uh, trust the visions that you have, 
Uh, if you are sensing things, seeing things, your clairs, your clairvoyance, your clairaudience, clairsentience, your claircognizance, all of this is really heightened this month. And I feel that if some of you are feeling a bit fearful of whatever, of what's around the corner, you know, maybe it's related to your work or to a relationship. Um, this is where you can trust what you're feeling. You can trust what you know. Uh, but not from this place, it's from a higher place. That's why the Queen of Swords is coming out for you, so that you sort of get a mastery over the mind. That's going to be very important for you this month, is also being able to see things from um, both sides, you know, uh, the Piscean energy, it's uh, the good and the bad, it's the higher octaves and the lower octaves, you're gonna be feeling and seeing it all. Some of you may have a really beautiful divine counterpart that's there uh, and you're sort of like in this together. Maybe they're going through some of this. Um, maybe they've been sort of shutting you out a little bit for some of you. And, um, and I feel that you're really the guide in all of this. You're really the leader inside of this relationship. And I feel, uh, yes, look, um, the lovers, a six and six, look at that. So the lovers, harmony underneath all of that, where you have this vision of harmony, you have this vision of balance, you have this vision of inner alchemy, alchemy of, I was feeling like we're stronger together, that you're fine on your own, but you can see where humanity is stronger together, where if we could come together in a specific way, or a not so specific way, just that when we come together that we're stronger, you have vision. I think you have very clear vision. That's clairvoyance, clear vision. So I feel like, Ophiuchus, you have very, very clear vision of something. And it's important for you to know that. It really is. So healthy choices are going to be important for you this month. Knight of Pentacles, that Virgo energy of like making healthy choices for yourself. Again, I feel that conserving some of your energy, don't give it all away. Don't give all of your time away. Maybe don't give all of your money away. And for some of you, it may be where you do want to give something away monetarily. Maybe you are giving to other people because you know that that's where you unstick the energy. That's where it gets unstuck. So again, different for all of you. <clears throat> Very interesting I feel like I can show this to Ophiuchus because you won't get scared. Um, underneath the harmony was the six of cups. So we got the triple six there, which is very sacred. It's been inverted uh, to make us believe that this is um, a bad number or, you know, an evil number. Um, but many of you know the spiritual significance of this, and I'm sure that you will leave it in the comments, um, as you often do. So uh, this is important. It's harmony. It's balance. Um, it's reflecting on happier times, not in a way where we're wishing away our life or wishing that we could go back, but where we harmonize, we take from the past and we bring it into the present. Uh, we bring that energy of love into the present. We, for, we can forgive here. We can make peace with the past here because it's the gift that we give to ourselves. So I really feel that you're carrying this attunement. It is. It's an attunement to the divine that you have. Uh, and it's uh, so because this is Gemini or Mercury. So it's through the mind and it's also through the heart, the masculine and the feminine one foot in heaven and one foot below because they're equally important in this now present moment. So I feel that you also have something important to share with other people because um, the Knight of Pentacles is sort of like my light worker. He's, you know, the Virgo energy of being service oriented, service to others. Uh, and so where other people may be holding back or trapped in fear or they're not facing a certain reality is something I'm hearing. You're helping to sort of move it along, but it's slow. It's gentle. I don't think that you're really forcing anything on anybody. And again, you're really focused on yourself with that nine of pentacles. At the same time, you can bring it back to you and disconnect from outcomes and results um, for the work that you're doing with other people. Wow, that's pretty powerful. So, okay, let's get you some more tarot. So messages for Ophiuchus. I'm 
And I think we're gonna put these up there. And some of you, you know, you may be like legitimately worried about your finances right now, housing, pentacles energy can speak to health, things like that, or that of a partner or someone that you really love, maybe going through some things, five of pentacles, yeah, so that's, you know, the card of um, scarcity or lack. It's where there is change around, you know, the financial things. And for some people, this could be, maybe it's been a solo journey for you and you've had to really go at it alone. And maybe you haven't felt a lot of support in your life. Some of you haven't had that spiritual union that you really wanted, that um, forever love. I mean, the two of cups with the lovers, this is more physical love. Even in this deck, it seems more spiritual. Um, this would be like a marriage in the physical world. This would be marriage in the spiritual world, in the spiritual realms, the higher astral realms. And this is sort of like down here in the 3D. Um, so maybe some of you haven't had that. And you've really felt with the five of pentacles, like you've had to go at it alone. Um, and that, but that has brought you closer to the divine that has brought you into your own alchemical marriage within yourself, your own heros gamos of your holy matrimony with yourself. Page of wands. I love it. This, this is very ophiuchus to me, um, because we're seeing where, uh, you don't lose your ability to, be in wonder around, about the world around you. Um, it shows an opening to a new path. It may be one very specific path. The Page of Wands, you know, will walk uh, one specific path. We see the toucan with the, um, with the macaw there or the parrot. So very jungle-like. It's exotic. It's the energy of the explorer. The toucans are interesting because they can regulate their body temperature through their nose. Um, so it shows where like you light the way for yourself. You are your own warmth. You are your own comfort, right? Because this is where it's cold and there's a winter and she may be cold here. The lights are on in here. So she could go and knock on a door. He could, he would go and knock on that door. But, um, the toucan has a spirit guide or spirit animal, um, sorry about that. I hope that. I hope you can still see this. Okay, I have a low battery. Um, so it's showing where like the, the toucan can regulate its own body temperature, it can provide its own warmth, or it can cool itself down. So it's very self-sufficient. So even though this is just a page, there's a self-sufficiency with this page and this wanting to explore, wanting to explore something new, um, a new path for yourself, a new project, a new passion that's opening up, having the inspiration to do it with the Six of Swords. Another six. I think we're getting like every single six. Um, some of them were at the bottom of the deck though. King of Pentacles, beautiful. So where there has been lack, where there has been this sort of solo energy, perhaps even where you've been left out in the cold, where you've been abandoned, even a core wounding of abandonment. Um, you're paving a new path and you're moving forward. Queen of Swords, Six of Swords. She's like, she's not just a uh, like a woe is me, there's a dark cloud. Uh, she's in the cloud. She is the cloud and she's like, I'm gonna get into this cloud and I'm gonna move forward with it. I'm gonna get above it. Um, and we're seeing the desert island there, the desert, deserted island. Um, so you, you know, really, and she's got an anchor. So she gets to decide where she drops the anchor, where she grounds herself, where she lands. Uh, it's connected to a star. So um, cosmic forces at play here. And this is where, you know, from the five of pentacles to the king of pentacles, you know, this is like rags to riches. So I'm hearing for some of you, it's a rags to riches or somewhere in between um, in your power. This could represent a new job. 
uh, for, for some of you, page of wands with the king of pentacles, like moving forward, you're transitioning to something better, the worst being behind you. So in July, I feel like you may have a really beautiful new path, new offer. Um, for some of you, maybe you, you were working really hard and it didn't pay off. You didn't get the return. Someone told you that there would be a specific material harvest or return and you didn't see it. And so you're looking out to see what else there is, you know, where, where the love and the time and the energy is reciprocated, where it's equal, uh, where you can start saving your money for a rainy day or saving your energy for uh, a beautiful union. So if you've been deceived or lied to, whether it was sort of accidental, it just didn't work out the way it was supposed to, um, just knowing that there's something new that's coming from the from rags to riches and it's that material harvest but it's also spiritual and it's part of your destiny so the wheel is turning uh, in your favor we can honestly say that right the wheel is turning in your favor and I think that there may be some new offers um, your business may really take off uh, you may receive a raise uh, for some of you you are moving away from something though and uh, for some of you, what you're moving away from is the thing where, you know, it's in the mind. So it's a change of perspective. It's, uh, you know, where the, the dark clouds start disappearing and you're feeling sunnier and you're feeling more optimistic and your energy is returning. Uh, that kind of energy. King of Pentacles with the Knight of Wands. Look at that. Amazing. Um, so Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and now we're getting Sagittarius. Uh, so this is beautiful. I feel like adventure is awaiting you. Adventure awaits. Like these are very sort of different energies because the King of Pentacles like is very firmly rooted and planted. He's reliable, trustworthy. He's the self-made man. Everything he touches turns to gold. He's a leader in the physical world. You know, he's a great partner. He's honest and reliable and um, his word is gold and he just has a way with business and all of that. Uh, and the Knight of Wands is the one who's inspired and creative and takes risks and wants to travel and move. You may be traveling. You may be getting an opportunity to move. Um, you know, the Knight of Wands can be a bit of a gambler. He's going to jump through a ring of fire, you know? Um, and look, he does not look phased at all. So two sort of very different energies, which um, maybe your winning combo, you know, is to stay grounded, do the work, look at things uh, from a practical standpoint, like look at, you know, the details uh, kind of a thing. Um, but it's also going to take inspired action and it's also passion driven and, you know, it may require that you take some risks. It may require that you do a bit of traveling with regards to relationships. Um, I'm definitely seeing where maybe if there was a time where like I was feeling like you were sort of single and on your own, um, you're moving towards union, you're moving towards, um, a partnership that is both grounded and anchored and solid, but also passionate and fiery and beautiful. So this partner that I'm seeing here, they're the reliable type. They're not the love them and leave them kind of type. You know, their word is gold. Um, and the other thing too is that, you know, this energy can feel a bit boring sometimes um, because he's not the most exciting king. He's not the king of wands. Um, you know, he's not the king of cups, but the king of pentacles is going to be there. He's going to be there. He's going to stay and he's going to want to build a kingdom with you in a real way. In you know, in a tangible way, you'll see the results with him. And this partner may have a wild side. And maybe if this is your person that you already know, they've been holding back their wild side and you're like uh, trying to drag it out of them, you know, and uh, perhaps this is what's sort of changing. This is part of the, the change. And this could be like your energy is, you know, really bringing that out inside of this union is one of you is a bit more down to earth and like, let's like do the work. Um, but you're sort of, I'm feeling like this is you, if you guess like more of the explorer, like let's get out and explore, let's have some passion, let's um, 
follow our passions and have an adventure and all of that. And you may be able to do it if that's resonating in a, an inexpensive way. Um, there's a transition that is happening. The Six of Swords. You're in a transitionary time and it's uh, it's where everything's coming into balance. So the sixth chakra, the lovers, number six. Uh, the Six of Cups, memories of love. Um, and then the Six of Swords, so many sixes. So it's where like you're being attuned. Uh, and then the Queen of Swords, balance. You're being attuned to balance, to greater balance in your life. And harmony, right? Didn't we see harmony? Oh yeah, right there. Bottom of the deck is the world. This is beautiful. Worlds within worlds within worlds. Um, interesting. I'm feeling like there may be an old part of you that's being left behind. An old thing. <laughs> an old person. An old, not old as an age old. But something that... Um, I don't know, there feels like there's a distance, like a large distance between something. And um, I don't think it's really bothering you too much though. I feel like you're just gonna be boldly going where you've wanted to go. And that's part of the wheel. You've got big Sag energy with the Wheel of Fortune and the Knight of Wands. You've got big Sag energy here. So, if there's sort of, you may be traveling, okay, okay, more travel here, Six of Swords, Knight of Wands, even the Wheel of Fortune, you may be traveling to something, transitioning to something, planning something. The Knight of Pentacles, he loves to plan, so you may be planning this, um, and you maybe you're saving your money, you're looking, you know, out with your telescope to see where in the world. Um, um, remember that show, Where in the World is Carmen Santiago? I thought that was like the cutest show. Um, and, and, you know, and this is Capricorn. So I think it's also important to trust the lessons that you've learned. It's a big cycle. It's a, a lot of hard earned lessons. It's hard earned victory. It's stubborn as heck. This energy takes a long time to complete. Um, so that's really nice. All right. Oh, Fucus. Let's see where we want to go with this. So I'm going to get you some fractal cards, which I think you're really going to like. And let's see where we go with this. I'm also hearing um, things that, things are people that have tried to keep you small. Uh, you're moving away from that energy. Faith, beautiful. I love that. It does take a lot of trust. This is your attunement to the divine. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is your attunement to the divine. Uh, it's not that you have blind faith. You know, with the world coming out, you have a wisdom. So it's not that you will blindly trust or have blind faith. It's more psychic for you. And the word psychic, it's like, can we get a new word? You know, it's more clairvoyant for you. With your third eye chakra, like, it's, um, <clears throat> it's not a blind faith. You know, it's because you're attuning... And you're attuned to trust your attunement, to trust the channels that you're tuned into is really important for you. Oh, look at that. Celestial. You are, you have this celestial guidance. It's right here in the Six of Swords and the Queen of Swords where we do see that star up there. So it's where you want to anchor this celestial body that you are. Uh, so that's important. Um, stargazing would be really nice for you uh, in the month of July if you're up in the Northern Hemisphere where the nights are nice and warm. Um, I'm also seeing it connected into your spiritual union. There is a celestial counterpart for you, Ophiuchus. There really is. And it's part of your destiny. Um, part of your destiny is, um, and this may not resonate. You may be someone who is, to I mean, everybody is complete on their own. So maybe, you know, this isn't 
something that you're even interested in. The spiritual union is within yourself because these are all aspects of the same being here. And you can even see we're down there. She's just a sketch. So it's pretty amazing. Um, and for many of you, there is this beautiful divine counterpart that's going to be here in the physical world or that you're connecting with energetically is something that I'm seeing here. I love this. It's like kind of having the star card there. So destiny, celestial, spiritual union, attuning to the divine and have faith in that. Wow, that's potent. And I want to show you what was at the bottom of the deck. Everything is in right order. And that um, card of trapped in fear, you know, and all of the things that have been happening around the world, they've been hard. There's so much suffering and pain. So this is a much higher level perspective. And I'm not here to encourage anybody to spiritually bypass, you know, some of the tragedies around the world, but for your life specifically, and you want to, if you want to see this on a global scale, um, that, you know, we go through so many tests and challenges. It's Capricorn. This is Saturn. Saturn was a heck of a God. He did some really, um, horrible things like, like he like ate all of his children and stuff like that. So it's kind of that energy and it's being able to see things from a much higher vantage point, like that queen of like the queen of swords there. So, all right. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get you uh, some angel cards and I, I don't have the, I don't know who made these. I found them at Goodwill in Sedona. They're not signed or anything, but I love them. We'll do uh, Ophiuchus Sun, Ophiuchus Moon, and Ophiuchus Rising. So three cards, one for Ophiuchus Sun, one for Ophiuchus Rising, Ophiuchus Sun, Moon, and Rising. So Sun will be first, Moon will be second, and Rising will be third. I'm telling you though, there is money to be made. <laughs> I'm definitely seeing that. There is money to be made. Your plans are worthy. Protect them a little bit. Um, it's leading to, you may even be meeting your divine counterpart um, through this uh, plan that you have, through some of the work that you want to do. That may be where like some of the sacred, you know, where somebody comes in for you, the sacred union, have faith. Um, some of you may need to save your money a little bit, conserve some of your money. <coughs> Um, it's changing. There's a new path that's opening up. It's transitional for you. And it's leading to so much success and adventure and adventure. I'm just seeing like this beautiful path of like, it's earth and fire. You know, it's definitely like an earth and fire kind of energy. Okay. So this is Ophiuchus sun. See that heart there. Ophiuchus moon and Ophiuchus rising. So for my beautiful Ophiuchus sons, what is this? There is a beautiful, strong energy and love in your relationship. However, if there is conflict, you could consider seeking external help now. Don't be too proud to fight for what you love. Sometimes you have to set the one you love free and yourself too in order to be able to see the big picture from a distance and with fresh perspective. You have a lot in common but are individually very different. Talk about expectations and mutual frustrations but with a newfound openness to each other's views. Come from a loving and authentic place in your expressions. That's the best that you can do. Ask for help to maintain positiveness and see the love in each other's hearts, even when disagreeing. I'm wondering for some of you, if you have like this relationship in the physical world, but then there's some kind of like otherworldly, galactic, angelic, a spiritual union that you have. And this partner is helping you work on your relationship in the physical world with this partner. Sounds a little bit weird. Maybe you've had visions of that. Don't know. Let me know. Okay. Ophiuchus Moon, this is your beautiful golden angel. Looks very regal. Like the warm glow of copper, you light up every party. 
You heal many hearts and bring many wonderful people together in your company. Take care of yourself and protect your own feelings. Do not be burdened by other people's problems and do not take in what does not belong to you. Especially with an Ophiuchus moon. Oof, yeah. Nurture your own inner glow and spend time with good friends who are there for you so that you can allow yourself to let your hair down and receive love and support. I greet you. Your work is powerful, energetic, and necessary. Oh, I feel all the emotions from this. So copper, copper is good for you, Ophiuchus Moon, in this now moment. And rising. Okay, she reminds me a bit of the Queen of Swords there. Parts of your energy are vulnerable and delicate. Your arms and shoulders are like beautiful butterfly wings. They may seem fragile, but are capable of carrying a lot and are much stronger than you think. Don't be afraid to live in love. You get back so much more when you dare to give and receive. Butterfly wings. Your arms and shoulders are like beautiful butterfly wings. Feel into that. That might be a meditation that you do, you know, at night or in the morning, um, or you, you sense and you feel like your wings, you know, just your wings in general. For some of you, maybe it's a butterfly. For others of you, maybe it's more angelic wings, dragonfly wings, um, eagle wings, but feeling your wings for uh, Ophiuchus rising. So those were your messages for the month of July. I hope that you enjoyed this. I will be uh, doing the rest of your videos pretty much until they're done, just over the next three or four days. So, oh, we're not done yet. Oh gosh, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. I got this great little deck, the Empath Power Cards. So let's get you a few messages. All right, so Empath Power Cards, highest and best messages for Ophiuchus for the month of July. We'll take three. I am not responsible for other people's feelings. Yes. Unless you really feel like you are, you know, because you, you know, done something or whatever. And in that case, you can say you're sorry. But for the most part, that's almost always true. It Anyway, so you can do with that what you will, but I think that's important for you to know, especially if you are dealing with some relationship dynamics. I was feeling like there are people around you who are very much in a fear mode, you know, all of that. Um, it is okay not to be liked by everyone. That's a big message. And finally, I prioritize my integrity. Beautiful. All right. Those were your messages. Oh, Fucus, have a wonderful, wonderful month of July. I will see you all soon. If there's anything I can do for you, please reach out to me. Take extra good care. I love you and I'll see you all very soon. Namaste.